Welcome back for another exercise. This one's going to be a little more challenging because there's a lot of curves, but that's what makes it fun. Let's go ahead and paste this figure in. So this was a bitmap image, and I want to resize this. So I'm going to hit Control R, fine graphically, and I know this is a radius of 65, which means this distance is 130. So I'll type that in, and there we go. Now this figure is going to start with the circle. I think that's the most defining point. ArchiCAD does not do diameter. You always have to do the radius. So just keep that in mind. I wish it did do diameter, but it's not really that big of a deal. I want the full circle. Notice that it's giving me an option to do dark length, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna click the same place twice. Now, if you find yourself clicking a lot and things aren't going the way you want, slow down, talk yourself through this because ArchiCAD has a very specific way. It wants you to give it information. And if you just start clicking, you're gonna find yourself kind of frustrated. So here's this circle. Uh, we need a line that's from the center 18 feet up. So what I'm gonna use is the offset tool that I taught you about. And now if I draw a line, and I wanna to go to the line tool, so I'm gonna hit L, I'm gonna hold, this edge of the circle to get the center point. My offset's still in effect. I'm gonna click an arbitrary length, hit again to terminate the line, and now it's asking me for the offset, so I can hit 18. And to make this a little bit more obvious that that's not part of the geometry, that it's reference, I'm gonna change the line type. So here we have this, and now we have a circle, and we know that we, the circle is 78, 37, 43. And you, let's go ahead and just draw the circle. And that radius looks like it's 26. We're coming off of here. And then you can either do the math mentally or you can move it a few times, F5. Since I'm recording and my brain's distracted, I'm going to just cheat take the lazy way and just move it three times each one of those increments. And then I see I have a line that's coming out of this radius. So I can just run it long. I have, I want to copy that F9, bring that down 18 feet. And that becomes part of this bar in here. We'll work with all the fillets later. I always do the fillets at the end. It's going to be a lot easier. I'm going to do hit L to invoke the line tool. I'm going to hit O because I want to bring a line down here. I'm going to click again to terminate that line. Then I'm going to go 43. And that's this corner point. And while I'm at it, I'm going to hit shift to select left mouse button, F9. And I'm going to go over 37. And that is this corner point. So we can just bring this down. So these are some reference geometries. I'm going to start down here at the center. That's giving me the quadrant. I'm going to run this to this point. I'm going to run this to this point. And I'm going to run this into the circle. And I'm still horizontal, so I can click. And now I'm starting to develop this shape. I don't need these reference lines anymore, and I can delete that one. We know that this is 20, so I'm going to hit Shift, left mouse button to select, F9 to copy. Make sure you see the perpendicular sign, and I want to go 20. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Shift, F9, click, 20, over. And now I'll just trim some of this up out with the Control key. Select that line. And I'm holding shift, left mouse button, hit I, and now I've connected these. And it looks a little different because I don't have the fillets, but we'll deal with that in a minute. And, you know, we are starting to get the shape uh, pretty nicely. Now we want to, we have a radius of 180 here. And this can be a tricky part of ArchiCAD. ArchiCAD doesn't have a very good tangent to tangent relationship um, in the in the geometry methods it has tangent to tangent and then a point which does work but we have tangent to tangent with a radius 
AutoCAD does have this, ARCHICAD doesn't, and we're going to see how good I am here um, at remembering because there's a really interesting trick So I'm to make this work, and I'm going to show it to you right now. So and if I have to do it a couple times, don't laugh. I'm going to hit circle, I'm going to click, I'm going to do 180. And I'm going to click again because I want a full circle. And I'm going to take this circle, and I know that I want it to be tangent. So that works for me. And I know that to make this tangent, the, the point that they touch has to be the centers have to align. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I run this line through, and I put this circle on this line that's running through here, and then I hit F5, and I go from here to here, I know that this big circle is tangent to that little circle. And I know that, so when I, I drew a radial line through the center of the smaller circle, I extended it down, I made sure that the big circle is on that radial line, and then I moved the edge so that these are now tangent. And what I need to do is I need to spin this big circle from the center of this circle. So oops, let me show you what I mean. So here's what I'm trying to do, and I can get real close. But I don't but this is CAD. I'm not just gonna guess. I want to make sure that it's right. So I can I know that this circle, the big circle needs to pivot on the small circle. And the way I generally do this is I now want to rotate this circle so that the midpoint of this arc as defined by this arc. So now we're going to move down to between intersections. So that point needs to touch that point. So we draw a construction circle, and we want to go through this point. We draw a little arc right there. Then we go F6, we click, and we know that we go from here to here. And now, because I was rotating around this circle, this one's perfectly tangent, and that one's perfectly tangent. And that's the genius of YouTube, you can go through and watch that a few times because I know what I just did was a little complicated. So I have, and fortunately we don't have to do it very often. I don't need this line anymore. Now I need to do an offset of this line, 20. And I have a couple of options. I have the ability to do a radial stretch. And when I hit control, that radial stretch is going to make a copy. So I hit control, and I can turn, toggle that on and off, and I can even do multiple copies with control alt. So I'm just, I just need one copy, and I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to put my node up here with shift alt. I'm going to come down, and this, according to this, it's an offset of 20. So I can type 20. And now I've created an offset, and I can trim these guys. So that's fantastic. And now we have the basic shape laid out. We have some fillets that we're going to have to struggle with, but that's okay. And now we can put these circles in. So let's go ahead and draw a circle with C. I'm going to hold the my Mercedes symbol over the big circle so that I can create the smaller circle that has a radius of six. So I hit six enter and I enter again so that I get a full circle. And I know that the outer edge of this circle is 29 units from the big circle. So we can select this, do this radial stretch again, hold control, hit shift alt to move our user origin temporarily, hit 29. And that didn't work. Let's try it again. Let's see what I did wrong. So I hit Control Z to undo. I'm gonna do a radial 
radial stretch. Now, if you hit a node, it allows you to open up the circle and close the circle. But if we don't hit a node and we do the edge, we're going to get this radial stretch. And I'm going to hit Control. Come over here. And I'm going to type 29. And it's still not working. Hmm. Not sure why. What I'm going to do is cheat. I'm going to hit F9. And I'm going to make a copy of the circle. So I have two copies on top of each other. Now I'm going to do a radial stretch. And I only move one of them. I'll have to play around and see just exactly why that didn't work. I'll hit F5. And I can line that up because it's 25 to the outer edge. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to use Shift M for multiply. I want to uh, radial, uh, rotate, multiply. I want increment. I want a number. Let's see if this works. Six. Let's see, this takes some trial and error often. Um, so I'm going to go loop. This is not the way we want to do it, so we're going to, and that's not unusual, that I find that I often have to play around with this a couple times to get this to do what I'm expecting it to do. I touch the circle, click here, click here, and if I click again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's what, I'm going to undo that again, control M, and I don't want the minus one, I don't think. Let's see. And now it's giving me six. So that's unfortunately kind of common when I use the multiply. I end up having to kind of trial and error, undo, redo, until it gives me uh, what I'm looking for. Now, I don't see that this gives me exactly the orientation of this bolt hole pattern. Um, I think we just have to eyeball it, which I don't like doing, but we'll go ahead and do it. We'll hit, we'll select them all. Notice I selected from left to right so that only the elements that are completely contained within that bounding box are selected. F6, I'm going to touch the circle and then go to the center. And then I'm just going to visually line this up so that it kind of looks like the, the drawing. I wish they had a dimension in there, but that they don't, so it can't be wrong. And then we'll just quickly go through and do this little detail up here. So it's a radius of 10, so I go to the center, type 10, enter twice so that I get a full circle. And we have an eight unit spacing of these spokes to the center, and they're three units wide. In this case, we're using feet. So I'm gonna come up straight out of the top, I'm going to come off of here, I touch this, I'm not clicking, and I hit a shift alt, then I type 8, and I'm going to hit offset O before I finish that, so that when I finish this, it lets me move it, and I go 1.5, I hit shift and select, F9, move it back 3, and then I can clean this up, and I can snap that in. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see if we learned anything. Shift M, we like the distribute and we want eight. So we'll start here. And I click the same point. Now, this is a great example of needing to click the rotate with path. So let's undo that. Control M, and we need to rotate to the path. And now when we click this twice, it rotates to the path. And we can just quickly do a cleanup by holding control. And we got this spline pattern. And again, it doesn't give us the angle. I'll hold the space bar. Select that. Hit F6. And kind of just move it so it looks similar to the drawing. So we're almost there. Let's go ahead and just do some easy fillets. We have a 14, a 12, a 10, a 20. So let's just kind of work our way through these. This is 20. I'm going to select both of these from 
right to left. I do that without even thinking, but it's important because I don't want to have to select the whole a box big enough to contain both of them. I hit F for fill it. I type 10. This, these two are 12. I'm going to hit fill it 12. Notice I have an extra line in there, so I'll just select it and delete it. This one, these are 14. Now, when I select this, I'm going to get that radius line, and I'll just hold shift and select it again. F14. So we're almost there. Now, here is an interesting little problem again. Um, and let's see if I can come up with a way to to resolve it. So I clicked the node and dragged this open. That's this on the head palette. I can select this and hold shift and select this and with any luck it it worked. It gave me a nice tangent line between these two. Then I can bring this and close it back up because that's what this drawing shows. I'll use a similar strategy here. Shift Fill it 14 and it shows wrong, which sometimes it will do. Let's see if I make these the same point. Still wants to do that side. And I don't really understand why it does one or the other, so I'm just going to stop fighting it and spin it around, see if. Oh, it's because the curves are more tangent. Okay, I understand why. Um, yeah, it shouldn't have worked. How's that? So what we need to do is we need to find a circle here that bends back around. So we want to draw a circle with radius 14. And I actually don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to kind of step through this until it works. So I know that I need to draw a line from the center of this circle. So, you know, there's some intuition. You just have to kind of play around with it. And it's a little harder when you're recording and you have to do it for uh, on demand. But, you know, here I am and let's figure it out. So this circle, if I rotate the circle about this point, you can see that it's always tangent. And so I need to find out when this circle becomes tangent, which is about right there. And we know we want to rotate it about this point, but we don't know when this comes in contact with this. But I think what I need to do is draw a circle using the midpoint of that one. I'll draw an arc there. And I don't know if this is going to work, but I'd love to look good right now. Let's see. And that was correct. And intuition, kids. I just did it. Um, and I'm going to bring this all the way back. Hold control. Clear that out. That gives me this circle. And I'm a little breathing a little hard. I want to get this one done without looking dumb. I just did a five foot radius. I want to, again, draw a line from the center of this circle through here, move this center on that line, and let this sphere roll around on that circle. And I think I'm getting the hang of this, so I'm going to draw a circle from this midpoint here. a little different isn't it well this one we know that we want the quadrant of this circle which is right through that point right there yeah, that makes sense I'm gonna go from the quadrant and I know that quadrant wants to be on that line and I can use control use control and a uh, little sigh of relief you're gonna struggle with those those are tricky uh, you're going to feel really good about yourself when you get it to work, though, so keep that in mind. And we really don't need this line anymore. So that's a relatively complicated figure. Lots of little tricks I used. I'm sure I'd do it a little differently if I did it again. 
I hope you learned something from that one. Do it 10 times. The first time you're going to want to scream. And the next time you'll be a little bit more comfortable. And after you do it 10 times, you go, okay, I know how to draw. I know how to lay out geometry. I am a genius. I hope you feel like a genius very soon. Thanks for watching.